So today we're going to talk about the Oculus Quest 2 and pairing it with Unreal Engine 4.25.4 and some of the steps you might have to go through as a developer to get your environment set up. The first thing I would advise you to do is to go onto Oculus developer website, developer.oculus.com, sign up for a developer account. And this may be a little controversial, but sign up with your Facebook account or use an existing account or create a new account if you want to. But Oculus is owned by Facebook, so proceed with this step. And after this, watch the video for setting up the Oculus Quest 2, which will show you how to also download the app and pair it to your device and type in a code on the headset to get it paired. After this, go into the app to enable developer mode. Click settings in the bottom right corner and under settings, when you see your device there, click on more settings in the middle and click on developer mode there. And this useful little blog from Adafruit will show you how to reboot your headset afterwards. And that should be you set up in developer mode. You should now be able to do things like disable the Guardian, turn on USB debugging and so forth. After this, we switch to the Mac and we go and download the Oculus Developer Hub, which is a useful little tool for Mac, which enables you to be able to go in and update the firmware on the headset and do various other things to be able to look at the apps on your headset, allow apps from unidentified developers. Again, with this one, you have to go to log in with the same account, the developer account. I would keep all the accounts the same on all the devices and on your app. And as you can see here, you can monitor things like device performance. Obviously, make sure your headset's connected with the USB cable at this point into the device to see it because your Mac is now communicating with the device and not your Android or iOS device. So once I've plugged in the cable, I can then um, make sure my device is being seen by this app and I can go in here and enable the USB debugging, which we talked about earlier. From here, we can also see some of the apps that I've installed before from unknown sources, which we can enable. Later, when we're going to be doing this with Unreal, we need to allow for um, unknown sources. Other things you can do here is you can cast record from the device, for example, onto your computer, disable the Guardian system, and there you see I have OVR metrics installed to monitor my performance. Um, you can get this from the Oculus Store, and whenever you're running your VR applications, you can have a look and see what if you're reaching the target 72 frames per second that's required for Oculus. From here, I can go in and create a download the Epic Games installer and then create an ID to sign into this, into Epic. And once I've signed in here and done their capture, I can go into the library here and add a version. I've already got a version installed here. I'm going to uninstall this. You can keep multiple versions running, but we're focusing on the latest version here, 4.25.4. Click the Add button, install this, and wait for some time. So once this is installed, we can go and find the version of Android Studio we need for the next part from the website developer.android.com. And the version we need is 3.5.3, and I had to search to find this. And download the DMG, install that. Now, if you have previous uh, versions of this installed, later versions, uh, you may have to delete them to make this workflow work. I had to, on one of my machines, remove Android Studio entirely and reinstall it, and also reinstall the new 4.25.4. .4. But hopefully, if you're doing this from, from fresh, you won't have to do this. Um, once I have Android Studio, uh, installed I can go ahead and run the installer once I've downloaded it and install that with the settings that I'm going to show you in a moment uh, here I click don't send on the icon there and I don't update Android Studio at this stage so click next here standard installation next on that so I custom installation. Next on that, choose the view that you want and just go ahead here and click next to install. You might have to enable or disable your security settings in OS X at this stage to enable it to be able to download. So this next website is very, very useful for installing um, ADB 
and it installs homebrew first we run this from the terminal and just copy these links put them into the terminal and what this should do is install homebrew first press enter okay that you might have to put your password in and then copy this bit which installs Android platform tools I tried to do this manually but this is by far the easiest way and once that's all done and your headset's connected and awake you can type adb devices to get the um, see if your device is connected so the next step is to go into this folder uh, users engine extras android and run the setup android command which will install the correct files that you need for sending android devices or packaging okay that and then we're ready to launch unreal engine again this might take some time on your system compiling shaders is the one of the annoying things about using unreal so go make some coffee and come back um, at this stage it has given me some error message about xcode and i we don't need xcode if we're just going to send to the headset but if we want to package apks we may well need that and my version was listed as not up to date i was using 10.14 so you can update it here if you're on a later version and you may well need xcode for uh, various other ios and android um, packaging and builds but at this stage i wasn't too concerned about having the latest version might revisit that later uh, so back into unreal ready to start a default template in under games here click next and then into the virtual reality blueprint and select mobile tablet for this scalable 2d 3d for this ray tracing off uh, give it a name and create the project and again wait for a very long time for shaders to compile and once that's done we can go into this folder here and choose the motion controller map and this is the one we'll be focusing on that has pre-configured controls for the quest 2 and just into project settings here and copying these from some of the tutorials i've seen online these are the settings that seem to work for me so you will have to go in here and manually change some of these. The first thing I check for is actually on their plugins to make sure that the Oculus VR is enabled. And then back to project settings here. So you want to go into your maps and modes and just change your startup map here to the motion controller map and then back over to the side here and click on packaging and there's a couple of these options we have to change now you will may have to experiment with some of these scroll down there and just click cook only maps this is for your apk packaging and on their list, list of maps to include in packaged build just hit the drop down here and choose your maps from your your um, folder that you've got your project your motion controller map and just okay that next thing you want to do is just click exclude editor content when cooking and exclude movie files when staging then over to support platforms make sure android is checked there and under target hardware you should have set this whenever you started your project but just check this again that it's mobile tablet and scalable and then over to the side here down to your rendering settings which is the important one here now you can play around with some of these settings but on this one under maximum number of csm i leave that at two and then change the mobile msaa to four times msaa again you can try different settings here and see how what the quality changes like and how many frames you get if you've got more complexity in your scene scroll down to uh, reflection capture resolution some people say to use 32 for this some say 128 some say 64 so you can experiment with that as well and then forward shading we definitely need it's going to ask you to restart at this stage and you may have to compile shaders but just wait until we've checked some of the other options here so if we go down to mobile hdr this is an important one as well this allows some post process and some material properties to work i have this turned on but you can experiment with turning this off Make sure instant stereo is on.
and down here under uh, default settings anti-aliasing change that to MSAA and next to your platform Android settings and this is where we have to configure our Android Studio so just click configure now there or accept SDK license and here you can just check that your minimum SDK version and your target SDK version are correct. Um, also click the package game data inside .apk. And for the build, make sure ARM v7 is checked and you can either choose Vulkan or OpenGL. I've chosen OpenGL and didn't have any problems with that. Here under package for Oculus mobile devices, make sure the Oculus Quest is there. Quest 2 isn't at this stage, but if you build from source, you might have this option, but I've chosen Oculus Quest. And over to the Android SDK under platforms there. And on my one, I've left these blank because if you install from inside the folder that I showed you earlier, then you sh it should automatically point to the correct path, but this is where you may have problems. Uh, under the SDK here, I've got latest under NDK, I put Android-21. And on the PC version, you'll see the Oculus plugin here, but not on the Mac version, as far as I know. And here you can restart and just wait for the shaders to compile again. Unfortunately, it's a, some time waiting for this. Once they're compiled, you should be you should see your quest on here and you should be able ready to launch to the quest. It should show up on that little menu just on the right hand corner above launch. It looks like nothing happens here. So you wait a couple of moments and uh, it should send this project over to your headset. That should take between five to 10 minutes and you'll start to see this processing assets screen, which which may take some, some time, as I said. So just wait for that. You can get the output log on here, which shows you what exactly is happening. And if you have any errors, um, you can put them in the comments down below and I can see if I can address them, but they'll come up in red. And once everything's good to go, you should see running VR test on Quest. You can pull out your cable, put on your headset, and you should see your level ready to go. Again, just make sure that you've got your development settings correct, that you've allowed, um, a device to the, your device to accept unknown and yeah that should be it basically tell let me know if there's anything that you want me to go over or a comment subscribe and thanks for watching